Droners, what's up? B here, and I want to also tell you guys that on the 22nd of April at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to be doing live show with Ready Set Drone because Ready Set Drone is awesome. They do crazy reviews. Their page is amazing. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. And we are going to be going live on his channel, maybe ours too, but check out Ready Set Drone, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, April 22nd. It's going to be lit. And fly. Ha! <laughs> Droners, what's up? Everybody loves drone or fail videos. I mean, I do too, they're hilarious. But you know, you gotta have balance in life. And we'll call this that balance because honestly, this is more important to me. This is drones doing good. This is drones advancing humanity and this is drones keeping us safe and all of the above, blah, blah, blah. Either way, this is amazing. You should check it out because we're talking about drones doing good. Coming in number seven, uh, obviously everything in Australia kills you. <laughs> Including sharks. So there's a company called Astron and CD4D Intel. They teamed up to make the Sentinel VDS, which can spot sharks in the water. So I was like, oh man, there's sharks coming. Everybody get out of the water, kind of like Jaws. But now this time it's just a drone like that's just like, you know, telling people it's going to happen and the lifeguards yell at them. But either way, uh, they actually had a huge success in the milestone um, because it worked. Um, it pretty much captured every shark. And the thing is that the software they have actually learns how to capture or uh, spot sharks better the longer it does it. So this is something that's going to improve. Um, it's been approved for the Australian government for further testing, because that's all it is in the test phase right now. But stay tuned. We might have drones patrolling along with lifeguards on beaches in Australia so people, less people die from all the things that kill you in Australia. Coming in at number six, there is a boy who, detect, who at 14 years old built a drone that detects mines better than mine detecting software in people. Um, his name is Harshawardhan Zala. I'm so sorry, brother. I did my best. And, you know, he's from India and he developed a drone that finds landmines. I mean, he came up with the idea last year after pretty much like, um, he had a bunch of high, there's a high number of casualties in India due to landmines, like 15 to 20,000 people a year. And these people, pretty much what he said, this is a real problem, and he just created a drone that flies over landmines and able to detect them with infrared sensors. Um, and then he has another drone that help also diffuses it, which is really cool. Like, it, like the drone comes in and says, oh, there's, a, there's one, and then it comes in and just like diffuses it. And it was such a good idea, the final t um, after he finished the final prototype, the Indian government gave him three quarters of a million dollars um, for the design and tends to put them into production because they work better and they're just like, yo, this works. Like, we don't care who made it. You can be 10 years old. Like, we'll give you money. Like, I love that India did that. So, yeah, keeping people safe, drones, detecting mines. I love it. All right, coming number five is that Amazonian tribes, the Wipichan people of the Amazonian tribe in Guyana, Man, I'm really struggling with the names today. Either way, it's a great story. They built their own DIY drone because of YouTube. They found people building drones on YouTube and they took spare parts and they built a drone. Now, why would Amazonian tribes want to build a drone? Oh, I know, because people like to cut down the rainforest illegally and that's actually what they're doing. They're, they are monitoring the rainforest and catching loggers. And when interviewed and asked why, the tribe leader said, we are the guardians of the forest and we will not stand for its destruction in the name of development. Man, hats off to you, brother. Like, I'm loving everything about this. Save the rainforest, build drones, get them. Coming in at four is drones and augmented reality are helping firefighters fight fires. Now, for, before we get into this, never fly your drones around wildfires or fires in general. Super illegal. Don't do that. But firefighters are learning that the infrared cameras on drones are super helpful to learn where the hot spots are, where the fire is burning, and how to better fight those fires, making things safer for not only the people who are in those fires, well, there's no such thing as a safe place for people, but it's safer for the firefighters going into the fire areas. Um, so it's a big deal because drones are obviously a lot more convenient than getting an entire helicopter into the air. And if they're working with helicopters or working with firefighters, then, you know, we have a win-win. Like, we can really help them out. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, they're using, it's actually, Boeing combined the data with the augmented reality with Microsoft HoloLens to be able to make this work. And all of that is coming together to be able to fight. Fires. So I'm a big fan of this. We're fighting fires. Big companies are on it and everybody wins. Coming to number three, we have a photographer that helped out a bunch of families whose homes were destroyed after these major fires went through and made all these people homeless. Um, and what he did is he took a lot of photos of these families pretty much in the situation and looking at their houses and where these people are sleeping and how they're sleeping around their houses or in the shells of them because they don't have anywhere else to go. And what he did is he posted these pictures on social media and put them into like crowdfunding sources and things like that to be able to help them get attention to what their situation is and allow people to help them. Um, I think that an on-the-ground photographer could have done this, but to be able to see the real devastation of how much a fire does, it's hard to get that high up unless you have a drone. So he did that with the drone. He actually used a Mavic Inspire 1 and a Phantom 3 to capture all the images. Um, and it pretty much, like, it really helped. Like, people were like, wow, we didn't know that this that kind of devastation had occurred because normally you get the news coverage during something and they don't get the coverage afterwards. And this is what he did. 
So you should check it out. Uh, the link is below, and you can see a lot of the photos because it's pretty, pretty messed up. Coming in number two is the Edible Drone. Um, this is one of my favorite drone stories. Is uh, Windhorse Aerospace, a UK tech company, created a drone that's about nine feet, nine feet wingspan. It's a fixed wing drone. The idea is that these drones can carry a hundred pounds of food into areas that are really remote and hard to get to. Um, and it's pretty cool because that, like they get dropped out of the back of a much bigger plane and then they just fly down and can land precisely where they're supposed to. Um, and the even cooler part about it is I said it's an edible drone is that the drone itself is actually made out of materials that can be eaten. So not only does it carry 100 pounds of stuff and land precisely where you want it to, the drone itself is decomposable and also, you know, edible. I don't know if I'd eat it. The drones actually are, can, be, can fly up to 20 miles from where they're dropped and can land within a 20 feet accuracy of where they're supposed to go, which is incredible. And there's like the smaller ones I said with a nine foot wingspan. Um, and then there's the bigger ones that can carry up to 200 pounds of food. Um, and it's going to only cost like $100 to make one of these things. So a really cheap way to get a lot of supplies to people in either war stricken areas or like really hard to reach places um, and a really environmentally friendly way to do it. So I'm a huge fan of this. And uh, the guy who, the name of it is the Pouncer and the guy who developed it, hats off to you, Nigel Gifford. This is super dope. And coming in last but not least quantitatively, is that DJI released a report saying that from 2013 to 2017, drones have directly saved 59 lives. Um, I'm actually curious to like what the opposite number of that would be. But either way, 59 lives, um, and we're talking about consumer drones, obviously, um, and rescue operations around the world, 38 of those coming in the last year, which means that these rescue operations and drones are becoming a really big deal, and it's really helpful to help find people because they cover so much land. Um, DJ got these numbers from published reports, but think that the number is actually higher, so they're actually downsizing that number. And they're only talking about lives that are directly saved from drones, because obviously there can be indirectly being saved from drones. And we also know about drones with police and, you know, other firefighters and stuff, helping everybody all the time. So pretty much DJ is promoting themselves as making drones and saying that drones save people, but they have direct evidence of at least 59 lives being saved. So of course that has to be number one, because 59 lives are saved by drones. Bam! Droners, thank you for checking out this feel good video. And if you want to feel good about some more videos, you should click here because they are absolutely amazing. Otherwise, you should check out our welcome video if you haven't seen it yet because it's just so fly. And as always, make sure that you subscribe um, to support us because that is what allows us to continue doing what we're doing and make sure you stay fly.